Welcome to the Momentum Collective podcast. Momentum Collective provides training spaces and community around the world for unconventional minds and nomads to co-create the future. This podcast shares ideas on how we can transcend and shift towards our highest self. Hey everyone, John Early here, um, co-founder of Momentum Collective. We're here in our artist residency in Guatemala. Mm. Very excellent thing to have is uh, Parangi here in house with us this week. Um, was here at Embodiment Festival and uh, here in our residency and as well going to be teaching a workshop just today, which today? Is we're really excited for. Yeah. Um, talking about movement through voice mm. and b- body as an instrument. So thank you so much for, for yeah. being part of our, our community here. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah. Thank yeah. You. Um, I guess we'll start with that. How how do you define community when you're traveling around? What 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 are the essences mm. of community? How do you define that? Oh, well, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I have this. For me, like what comes up for me a lot in in all our travels is like this notion of um, this couple couple pieces. One is is I have a deep sense of. Fa- familia, mm-hmm. I like to say, you know, it's like this the sense of like the family connection, you know, that we're, w- it's so easy to feel, to like dwell and get really overwhelmed by the differences between people and cultures and worlds. And I think one of the things that has informed my whole life, growing up between three different cultures of Brazil and Mexico and the United States, um, has really helped me to see like the commonalities mm-hmm. and the pieces where we, where we really, we're so much more alike than we really realize, mm-hmm. more than not. And so that's been a big part of my medicine is like using music and using dance because it really those mediums of art are able to embody and transcend so much of our, you know, our mind beliefs, our, you know, ideologies, our, mm-hmm. our politics, all of these things. It's like in music is so powerful because it's able to really move people and bring people together, unify people. Um, and so in that, that's something that I'm always striving to do. Mm-hmm. And, and so when we create events and when we participate in events, we're always, that's one of the, the guiding principles. Like how, how is this event building community? Is it a community building event? Because if it's not, we're kind of not really that into it. It's like, it's, it's, it's part of like why we do what we do. Mm-hmm. Um, and if it isn't, and maybe it's a place where community could, building could come to it and we would bring that component, then we're looking for the angle of like, how do we weave that in? Right. Um, I feel like it's like a core principle for us. It's, it, as we build community, as we build those bridges and really help dismantle the beliefs and the self-limiting beliefs and the things that, that make us, give us the illusion of separation, mm-hmm. I find that, um, and that includes to ourself. As a matter of fact, it begins with the self, in fact, you know. It's like, how do we connect in with ourself, feel a deeper relationship with the self, that self-love, that self-connectedness. And in so doing, we build then the relationship between us and them, and break down that barrier, realizing that we're also family, in mm-hmm. fact. And then it's then how is that then woven through the fabric of a group mm-hmm. in that group context? And I think at, at the end of the day, it's it's one of the most important things that mm-hmm. we could be doing on the planet. And I and I guess to step back to like, there's this whole piece of you know how technology is playing this role in this in this narrative with us as human beings on the planet right now, and, and how we I see how much technology can really separate us and really creates this alienation this for as much as we're more connected than ever you know people talk about that with the internet Mm -hmm. it's like there's this of course this really insidious side to it the shadow side where it's like we're all sitting there like hanging out and everyone's like doing this on their little device and like actually totally disconnected like where you've all stepped out into this like virtual world more connected than ever while being more disconnected Disconnected than ever ever, in fact yeah and so a big part of the work that we do and i think coming back to your question of like what is community you know it's like it's it's community for me is presence Mm. and it's and it's being in right relation so right relationship how can we be let me phrase it another way. The question that I, I would, one of my teachers would put it this way, um, Doug Simmons, incredible herbalist, and, and one of my dear friends, and he would say like this, you know, when you look at all the religions, all the spiritual lineages around the planet, fundamentally, if you look and d- take away all the fluff, all the, other, the details and all that, look at what's the core message? It's asking us, how can we be a better relative? Mm. 
How can we be a better relative? How can we show up and not just a blood relative, but a relative to all things, not just two-legged and other human beings? How can we be a better relative in relationship with the water, with the earth, with the animals, with the insects, with all the birds? How can I be a better relative? Mm. So how can I show up in right relation? And when we do that, just naturally, mm -hmm. it, it, shifts, it shifts the whole collective. Mm -hmm. And so for me, community is about how can we really be in right relation and show up as a better relative? Because when we do that, the whole thing changes, the whole game mm -hmm. changes. And so, yeah, I think it, it, fundamentally that's like really what it's about. And in the analogy, if I could use of, of the medicine in, in the Red Road and in more of a Native American, Northern Native American traditions, we talk about the hoop or the medicine wheel. Mm -hmm. it's, it's about mending the hoop. It's like, how do we heal the circle? How do we bring everyone into the circle? Mm. And what's beautiful about the medicine wheel and the, you know, the architecture of that geometry, it's, there is no hierarchy. It's like we're all equal. We all show up and we all have to show up. It's not like, you know, some of us can be missing from the circle. It really is about when we all show up and do our peace and show up in our own way, bringing our medicine, whatever that is, from whatever culture, whatever story, whatever lineage we come from, then the whole of that circle is this unbreakable, powerful, transformational form mm -hmm. that really shifts everything. Mm -hmm. And so it's about how do we build the circle? How do we continue to build that circle and widen that circle around the planet and beyond? Uh -huh. And so, yeah. Yeah. That kind of, <laughs> a yeah, lot no, of, no, lot of pieces. Well, well that's just it. I mean, that's the gift of travel is the more you travel, the more you realize we're more similar than different in the end. Truly, truly. And especially coming back to, I guess, building community through music. I mean, you realize how integral music and movement is mm -hmm. to every community around the world. I can't think of many that don't, you know, even coming to, to the heartbeat, the, the sound or any kind of dance, There's, whether it's celebration or it's an invite for people to come and belong, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what you're saying, to complete the circle and get people in. And, and it feels like that's exactly what you do. And, and especially with your music, um, and now that incorporating so much more movement into the music, like, do you feel you can get as much out of music without movement? Or do you feel like they have to be synergistic together? Well, it's kind of funny. It's like, there is no music without movement. Right. There really isn't. Like, like literally, all sound is generated by something moving, mm -hmm. some motion, some vibration, right? Even the act of me, like, to make that sound, to hit something, right? To play, Energy has like to move. something has to move. There's a motion. Yeah. Like even the most you know, sophisticated, even though it's a violin or a flute player, they're not moving a lot, but they're moving, right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're moving this breath, they're moving these fingers, and that's what's generating the sound. Because when there is no movement, we come to stillness is where we find then the other end of the spectrum, right? right. Which, is, which is the silence. Yeah. And it's that stillness and silence that gives birth and arises into the movement and sound and motion. And at the same time, that m without one, you don't have the other. And they, they beget one another. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's actually something that I've been really sitting with more and more now that I've, I've been really deepening my meditation practice. And, and Vipassana technique has kind of been my, my gateway mm -hmm. into that work. Um, and what I c continuously get this reminder of is like this powerful thing that happens when we really gift ourselves stillness and to come back into the silence and to really sit in silence and like quiet the mind quiet all the chatter and to just be the witness and to step back into the observer you know the observer mm -hmm. to, to the God consciousness and as we continue to watch all the sensations all the sounds all the things all the feelings arise and pass it's like from that blank slate there's like a there's like a calmness that comes over that I find within myself in that inner ocean that then when I then have that it's like the music it's already playing it's mm. already there and so from that place of that total still and silence the richness and the depth of what can then emerge is exponentially greater mm -hmm. and then if I'm just like in the chatter da, 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 like going like that and now I'm going to go into music it's like yeah. you know what I'm saying it's like there's already all this noise and stuff yeah. and so the more the degree to which I can still myself and really come into that listening that deep listening it w enriches and gives rise to even more powerful and more incredible sound yeah. and creativity and creation yeah. form when it takes the form yeah. so that that cycle that spiral which happens over time which becomes timeless mm -hmm. I feel is 
for me is like one of the most incredible facets of this mystery that we're living and like in my own practice and in my in my work in the world you know as a performer and, and what have you and as a healer even in my healing practice I find over and over again it's like the more I, I'm in that dance of that spiral and cultivating my my sensitivity to the nuances of that mm. and whatever it is whether I'm, I'm dancing and moving or whether I'm working with someone in a session you know in one on one whether I'm facilitating a workshop or whether I'm on stage you know whatever it is in my, my, my relationship with my partner it's like constantly asking me to come back to okay let me wait hold on let me come back and just like mm. keep coming back keep coming back you know and, and let go of my attachment or my my aversion my cravings yeah and the more i can do that and stay in that equanimity man it's like this deep well that continues to you know we cultivate this well and then from that place i find it prepares me to face the uncertainty of life because it's all uncertain. That's the only certainty we have, right? It's always going to be changing. It's like this moment we think we got it, <laughs> you, get, you don't got anything, right? Yeah, <laughs> it just yeah. slips. The more you grasp, the more it just goes right through the yeah. fingertips. Skiva, you got to keep you, the movement going. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. And that's that is. It's the capoeira of life, right? It's yeah. the constant, the au. It's how do you turn the fall into the next motion? Yeah. How do you turn the, the, the flat note into a new key of a song yeah. that becomes a new genius moment of yeah, creation? It's all in context of what's, what's surrounding it, whether it is silence, whether it is another note, whether it is another movement, mm. and how to find that correlation within that. And I really appreciate you talking about the subtlety of giving presence or s stillness to so that you can hear the, the subtleties in the notes or the different things, and especially with some of your work with looping things, giving each one has its own presence. So you hear one thing first, and then you hear it in the orchestra as it gets looped together. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of taking people in on the journey of like, here's what you're going to be listening to, mm -hmm. and here's how it, I'm going to break it down in front of you and bringing that all together. Yeah, and, and create it all in the moment. And it's, yeah, it's very much a listening. And, and there's a part of that that it's great you bring that up. It's like, it's like hearing already hearing so much you know like I, I already hear the orchestra inside mm -hmm. of myself because I'm listening yeah and I'm, I'm listening in that deep in that from that deep listening place I can already hear that and allow it to arise but as it arises it's like it's revealing to me the pieces mm -hmm. like the colors you know it's like here's this beautiful painting it's like you know but wait I have to set down the foundation first so let me put this on the bottom like that's the background yeah. Yeah. You know, and now I'm going to add this layer and this layer and this layer until we come up and work. So we're constructing this beautiful architecture. Yeah. And then we're arranging it and listening to how, how, a, how a geometry, how an architecture, if you will, like for that analogy, right? How does it now, you've created this architecture, how does that space now change right. what was empty? Right. How, what is the conversation? Right. Because there's a dialogue, you know? Everything is in dialogue. Everything is communication. Right, it's a build up and it's kind of, yeah. I'm saying so like, so like for instance, it, using capoeira, right? It's like how the attack is a question. And so you can answer that. You can, well, how are you going to answer that? You're going to answer that with a, you know, negativa? Are you going to, you know, defense? Or are you going to counter with another counter attack, you know? Yeah. And so if there's this conversation. One always leads to the next move. A defense could be the next move for the mm -hmm. offense and yeah. But the point is that you're flowing, right? It, and that's what's beautiful about Capoeira, using that as an analogy as we look at the lens. It's like, you know, it's the, the point isn't to strike the person because then the game's over and they're, the, they're bleeding. No, it's the symbology. It's the questioning answers, the conversations, what's mm -hmm. rich about it. Because it's not a linear like strike, dead, I win, you're, you're, you lose. Right. It's actually that, wow, in every moment of the game, one person is constantly, there's always this ebb and flow of mm -hmm. a dance. Mm -hmm. And that's the dance of that form, which is so powerful, I think, as a martial art, because it's much more than a martial art. It's a symbolic form of, of freedom yeah. that emerges, right? In Communication. A of com yeah. conversation yeah. and symbolic winning and failing where the oppressed, the one who is oppressed becomes the mestre and the master and vice versa. Conversely, the master gets to experience what it is to be oppressed. So it's like this reversal role of roles. Mm -hmm. And so in very much that way, you know, in the music and dance, the conversation for me and that's why all my sets are improvised and totally live and woven in that way yeah. because I want to be in a conversation with the space 
and the movers in the space, the seen beings and the unseen beings. Mm -hmm. So it's like listening and listening to all of that, you know? Yeah. Who are the ancestors of this land? How are they coming through me and, and all of us in this moment? What wants to arise in that? And so the degree to which, again, I can get out of the way, listen, really empty myself, is, is the degree to which the music and I think what comes through is, is actually powerful and palpably, mm -hmm. energetically like, wow, what, oh, that was incredible, but how did you do it? You're so amazing. And it's like, yeah. well, actually, it wasn't me. Yeah. <laughs> it's none of that's me. Yeah. That's us. Yeah. And it's actually not even us. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's when we get out of the way. It's when we let spirit move through us. Mm -hmm. And from that place, it's infinite. And, and we're not exhausted. We're not like, like, how did you play a four-hour set and just do all that just without having any, you know, you know, no set list? And it's like, it's get out of the way. Mm-hmm. Because the moment I start getting in my head, the moment I start, and it's not that I don't get in my head, you know, it's like, yeah. the moment I do though, it's like, it's not that good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the moment that it's like me there trying to make the thing yeah, be this, this way. Just focusing on the one instrument at a time, and then instead of even like a piece of art, you just look at it in one shot at when it's mm -hmm. finished, and you kind of go, okay, that's that's nice, that's great. But you can't really appreciate all the nuances where you, same thing with a, a track, of a DJ puts on one track, you get blasted with this whole wall of sound, and you go, mm -hmm okay, well, I either like that or whatever, but you don't see the nuances, and that's, I think, with mm -hmm. an improvised loop set, you really get taken on the journey of that conversation of what it means to build mm -hmm. into something and going into that. And, and everyone's in the sound. Yeah. That's the beauty, too, yeah. in, in doing it live, you know, versus if I had samples, right? Like, I could, I could loop a sample. Like, I could have, yeah. like, drum pads and be hammering that out, but there's something about when somebody's screaming over there, someone's yelling there, and they're in the drum. It's like, boom, chico, boom. Boom, chica, boom, ah, they're like in the sound yeah, you know yeah, like yeah. everyone where it's a creative thing it's like yeah. it's amazing to go back and listen to those when we have recordings of it it's like well you hear just like you know the energy the from the energy from, from the dance from the presence part. yeah and it's and it's informing everything that that arrives and it will never be the same that that and gives that, an added presence because it will always yes. be unique to whoever's there and it can never be recreated it, exactly it's the constellation that shows up it's the exact the, all of those people who just happen to be there and again seen and unseen right the also the energy of the space right the spirit of that place and time it's only there for that moment yeah it's one of the things that i find in, in my work that's really an interesting conundrum as a as a musician in 2020 um you know in this time in this age w of with the advent of recording right like here we are doing this podcast it's like this recording is happening right now and, and in a way it's just an echo of this actual moment where we're breathing this boat goes by, this wind that's here, the birds that are here. Mm -hmm. Like this energy is alive in this now. Mm -hmm. And it's gone forever in the next moment. Mm -hmm. And so we take that for granted with recordings because now we have this little, this ability to like create this capture, this little like, you know, and, it, and it's really an echo. It's a ghost is what right. it is, right? It's some ones and zeros. It's catching this vibe, thing that was alive and vibrating. And then it's going to regenerate that vibration, an echo, a uh, uh, you know what I mean by that? Yeah, like this, yeah. this, this, like dream of this thing. So others can connect some of that energy, but the energy It'll will never, never be, be what it was. The and full power yeah. of that, and I think that's something that I really love about movement and sound, dance and music, is that they're two art forms for me. That their medium is temporal, yeah. it's in the now, and I think it, it, again, people we easily forget, you know, because of recordings and our ability to like recall YouTube or pull up Spotify or whatever and just relive these things, that we forget how powerful they are. Like it's magic. Mm -hmm. It's straight up magic. Like go back a hundred years, just a hundred years and talk to n not even two generations ago, right? To our ancestors and ask them about how they were getting down. Like when they wanted to have a jam session or like whatever. It's like that is so magical because it just happened there. It's like, you know, how would you do it? You can't just go and turn on your little device and be like, ah, la, 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 la. Yeah. You had to like go call grandpa and your uncle and get the guy with the drum and that guy was the guitar and like everyone get together and yeah. build that community coming back to your first question mm -hmm. right and that's where the magic happened and now it's like we can just be in our own little like thing on the subway and just in our own universe which is awesome there's there's it's a great thing i'm not saying it's bad but it inherently introduces this really insidious thing which it lets us just not it take each other for granted it takes the magic for granted and for takes sure. the magic for granted yeah you know and, it, and I think we're seeing that. We're seeing that. People feel more disconnected than ever. 
people feel more depressed than ever. There's more suicide than ever. There's more. I mean, it's it. There's a sickness there. Mm -hmm. And conversely, I feel there is a deep desire for more authentic connection. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's really where I I feel my work is is in the world is really important. And the work with my wife Ashley, you know, is that we're we're really trying to find those ways that we can weave us together. Mm -hmm. How do we use the technology in a good way, be in that right relationship with it, mm -hmm. to, to build community, to build familia, to build connection like that, and mm -hmm. to remember and help us remember that we're no different than each other, and in fact, we're yeah. the same. Yeah. What's been like to work with Ashi now that you bring her up? Because yeah. she's been facilitating some of the movement and then making things a bit more, kind of, I guess, full circle of having the... the the, the guidedness of the music and then the guide of the, the movement and the voice to come together and then also the masculine and the feminine. So how does it feel like to you to to have have all that compared with just a solo a solo set where you're just playing yourself? I mean, I think contrasts are beautiful, you know? I love contrast. So like, it, I love just, just doing my thing and just like, you know, yeah, being able to just do whatever comes through me and, and, and being that and that's beautiful. And there's there's this magic that happens when I get to show up with my beloved and um, and the feminine, honestly, and just allow. How do I say this? When I get to be um, the pedestal, the platform, mm -hmm. and to support her to be able to be heard and the mm -hmm. feminine to be heard, it's like I feel like it's another level of of being in service. And especially as a man, mm -hmm. to be able to do that, to, for me to literally create. Now, now here's me just like ripping and letting it all come through and with everyone and we're co-creating this. But now here's this other degree to which I'm able, how can I create space mm -hmm. for the feminine to be heard? Mm. And in that, listen deeply myself so that I'm really paying attention to when something arises for her because she tunes into the room. She's empathic. She's psychic. And so, and she's picking up on what the collective, what's what's arising mm -hmm. in that collective, unspoken place. That it's so awesome when I just get to like, let me just break it all down and just let that be heard. Mm -hmm. And and it's just like boom, all of a sudden, it activating numerous people in the room who are feeling this thing, and it lets them go deeper in their prayer and their dance and their movement or their stillness. Yeah. And I feel like for me, that's one of my greatest joys, and I feel it's one of my greatest. Um, it, as a in a partnership one of our greatest offerings to the world is what happens when we're able to meet each other and in that love and in that collaboration and in that place of being seen especially the feminine being seen mm -hmm. and as the masculine being able to to witness her and to see her and to me to be humble enough and vulnerable enough and open enough you know to get out of the way and to like uplift her yeah. and i feel like ultimately that's it, it it's um it's an archetypal primordial relationship that I feel is, is healing some really deep traumas and wounds mm -hmm. in myself and my in the wounded masculine in myself and in my father and my father's father and all the way down and also for the collective of all the men yeah it's like how do we really show up and and she's been one of my greatest teachers I mean for sure yeah. <laughs> like when I think of who's my teachers like right now <laughs> in the world it's like wow her and our relationship and we have a therapist that we work with um, who, who calls, has this beautiful word, she says it's the we body. So it's like each of us as individuals, but then there's like this other being. The synergy that happens. Yeah. And it's a being. It's like the we body is like, and, it, and, and she, it, it has its life of its own, if you will. Right. You know, and so it's like, how do we take care of the we body? How can we nourish that? How can we continue? The we body needs to be taken care of, just like yeah. another being. And so if, we're, if we don't do that, then the wee body gets sick and, and it's not healthy. It, and then we both, you know, the relationship suffers. We mm -hmm. suffer in that, you know. So it's like this constant dance of the wee body. Um, so I just like offer that out there to our listeners and stuff, like thinking about that, yeah, you know. Yeah. And the wee body could be something in any relationship. It's not just with our beloved or with our, you know, our partner. It's also like, what is the wee body with our, our mother, our father? What is the wee body with any really, our friends? It's the community. It's the community, sure. the right? Collective. The collective yeah. wee body. Yeah. And so in all those ways, it's like, how do we nurture that and give it its voice and its space mm -hmm. and the time that it needs? And so it's a real dance with all of those. And I guess ultimately just to, to answer your question, yeah. So in, in that journey with her, it's, um, 
it's been such a teacher for me. I mm-hmm. mean, God, man, I'm I'm constantly humbled by it. <laughs> constantly. I think I got it. I think we got this thing. And then it's like, whoop, you know, yeah. the skin just takes my feet out. You know, like, no, you're not listening. You're not mm-hmm. really, you know, there I am back in my ego. There I am back in some trip in my head, you know, or attachment to something or whatever. And, and so um, the more I, again, I just, that I humble myself and get out of the way and just admit, you know, when I'm being blind, and when I'm going back, defaulting to some old pattern, you know, some story, mm-hmm. uh, the sooner that I can do that, the sooner we're back in love. Mm. And the better the whole world is, the whole better my experiences on this earth, which is the collective experience. And that's that beautiful trip and paradox of mm-hmm. like the individual and the whole. Mm-hmm. Oh. oh, Well, it's been beautiful to watch both of you together on stage. And mm. that we body, like you say, is definitely felt. Um, and even like building up the music and getting all that energy get people locked in so they can get in their space and then coming back to the contrast of taking out all the music and then letting that that strong feminine voice come in and then it really lands like those words that she says can really whether it's meditation whether it's that invocement um and that's what i'm curious because sometimes you got to step out of the way to let the creativity come through and sometimes you do need that guidance for people to kind of like align them on that path. So I'm curious, how do you, do you feel that people get, find more presence when they're being guided through something, through a movement or like, you know, getting people to clap their hands or any kind of involvement? Do you feel that uh, brings more presence to the collective or is it, is there, do you feel more presence when people are just in their element and allowing whatever to come through to come through? Yeah, if I hear your question right, it's like, does engaging, the kind of engagement versus not engaging as much? Is that what you're like kind a of prompt to give them that guide of like, um, you know, the second set you played at embodiment involved a bit more of like, um, mm-hmm. invoking more workshop style of like giving guidance and that kind of a There's thing. There's more of a facilitation. And, and facilitation for mm-hmm. for what people can do as a collective, and throwing those hints in there, and yeah, and it's always interesting to see what brings up more presence in people. Sometimes people need the space to just move and do their thing sometimes totally. people just need that little prompt to break the ice yeah and then also you have everyone as a collective together whether it's um you know clapping their hands together yeah, yeah. Or singing sure. so and engaging them mm. i i think both and i mean yeah. would be my answer I, I i really feel like they're they're both important and i and i feel like one doesn't have to be exclusive of the other right um i would say probably all my performances i mean even the set that i did the first night where ashley made, did a little bit of a, an opening and a closing as mm-hmm. far as like words words but even during the set like i was inviting people to to sing to to yeah. activate to yeah. make sound with me you know to open their voices to like i'm always going to do that i feel like engaging and and helping people remember i guess that it's this isn't a one way exchange of energy this is a co-creation. Mm-hmm. I this this I make I'm I have no job if we're not all present in here. Yeah, there's nothing for me to do here. Yeah, no I one's co- a witness. Everyone's part of the. We're co-creating this. Yeah, yeah this isn't a one way. I really I I feel like at the core it's like the whole notion of the audience and the spectator and this idea of like you know the separation from the performer and audience. I really love to break down that that invisible barrier. Like mm-hmm. that's one of the things I really intentionally always want to address and and help to like remove as much as possible this thing of like this one way kind of energy and really create this two way energy, this yeah. exchange of energy and understand that we're co-creating, we're co-weaving this thing. And the degree to which we can do that, the more epic. Yeah. The offering. Well, especially coming back to when you're not watching a video or a concert from your phone. You are part of it. So your energy is felt. Your presence is felt. So it's it's you know reminding that that hey we're in the moment here. You don't you're not just yeah pressing play on something. And well, that's the thing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I don't DJ mm-hmm. anymore. Like I you know I, I or, or choose to do that. Like I it's very intentional that I work my ass off and bring all this equipment and all of these instruments. All a lot of equipment. Plan. I remember all like so. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you for carrying some of those cases with me. But like that's a, it's a commitment, you know, the amor al arte, you know, for the love of the art and like what we're doing and, and the intention and the integrity of I think what really sets apart the work we do from a lot of other artists, especially in the world of electronic music, obviously it's, it gets it's become very computer based it's very much you know um yeah it's it, you know i you know with full respect to all my brothers and sisters who are, are producers and who are djs um 
but in that realm, you'll see very much so there's there's an emphasis of people say, oh, it's a live performance. This is a live set by Smack yeah. so and so, you know. Um, but a lot of times, it's still they're playing studio tracks. They're playing yeah. things that they're live set of them mixing the tracks together. Yeah, they're maybe they're maybe adding some live elements, or maybe they're adding a, a couple live instruments. But like, there's still like a bed of tracks that it was recorded at another time that is now being played back. So mm -hmm. there's playback. And I feel like what really s distinguishes the work that I'm doing and, and the f philosophy behind that mm -hmm. is what happens when it's a total risk. There's nothing pre-recorded. I'm creating it all right now, raw, with all of you mm -hmm. and the space and what is coming through right now. There's no set list. There's no preconceived ideas. You know, there's basically let me show up with all my presence, full presence. Mm -hmm. And, the, and is with all my presence and hopefully with all of your presence and then we have the gift of the present to each other of this co-creation yeah. and the magic that happens in that and so we can go from total stillness full meditative sound healing just drop into just the deepest frequencies to full ecstatic like let's you know let's totally yeah. freak out and dance and twerk and whatever right yeah. <laughs> like the other day you know the twerk shop i twerk was so funny right before why not it's, yeah <laughs> and so in, in in that whole spectrum it's like we feel i think there's something magical that happens and i feel like you know i for lack of another analogy i, I guess like people know like jam bands you know like the grateful dead are a great example like what happens when we don't know what's gonna happen let's just show up yeah. and see what happens when we just like let it emerge let it evolve let it arise yeah. and that emergent property and i feel there's something magic that happens in that that you lose again when you have a playback situation again yeah. the recording right and rehearse so rehearse preparation understanding of where it will go which yeah. is which is awesome and you know it's not to say that like i don't prepare i don't work and hone my craft like you know i have a deep relationship with every one of my instruments right mm -hmm. i've sat with them i've trained with them like i've lived with them we have a relationship there's a wee body there, mm -hmm. right? But then it's like, okay, all of that, good. It's, it, it, I kind of equate it to like, you know, the black belt. You know, the, they say the black belt of karate, right? Is eventually your black belt turns white because you've worn the crap out of it. And so the dye is gone and now you're back to the beginner. Mm -hmm. And so in the same way, it's like, you know, now let me bring all of these tools here and this flow machine, this technology, this crazy invention that I've built, right? And now let me just get out of the way. Mm -hmm. And what wants to happen? Mm -hmm. And for me, that is, a, that is not just me getting out of the way, but it's like the invitation is, can we all here as the whole room, everyone who's present, let's all just like put it all down, mm -hmm. get into our breath. That's why I often like to open my set, which is let's all take a breath together. It's like, let's start here from zero, from emptiness. Again, the stillness, the silence, mm -hmm. and then let's let it arise. And when that, like the other night we saw, right, in that set, it's like everyone went there. Mm -hmm. and when we all did that it was like the portal opens and all of a sudden like spirit literally comes down through all of us and in that place is my most juicy place i feel of like why i've come to this earth in this form in this time is to be able to facilitate and to help encourage and catalyze those moments with others to bring healing because mm -hmm. at the end of the day for me like i'm not in music for entertainment I'm doing music for transformation. I'm into dance and music. Like what I'm doing, why I haul all this stuff is to, let's create healing. How do we heal this land? How do we heal ourselves? How do we heal the container, the community? How do we heal these wounds as the masculine, as the feminine? How do we heal our relationship with our parents, with our lineages, the generational pain, all that suffering that's there, it's in our DNA. It's mm -hmm. like, how do we start to unravel that mm -hmm. and put it in being right relation again? And it's all about that right relation. Because if we can be a better relative when we do that, and we can have fun doing it. I want to mm -hmm. say that too. It's really important. Yeah, not take things too seriously. No, it's like it's a celebration, you know. It's like, because it, it, it is. It's like life and death is, man, it's a miracle. The fact that we're even here at all is a freaking miracle. Yeah. <laughs> like the capoeira to dance. Yeah, Finding It's a miracle, playing. man. It's a miracle that we're here right now, that the world is as it is. Even with all the effed up for like you know effed up things yeah. that are in the it's world it's a challenging right now. world but it's man incredible. but it's like here it is it's an opportunity for us to rise here's the opportunity let's rise up to it you know and then ascend and then transcend it and I feel like in music and dance and in those containers we can do that in that little portal we all were able to transcend to another octave of what's right. happening and when that happens man the more we do that it's like boom then we take that back into our life you know each person that's on the dance floor 
in that space we go back now to our family to our relationship to our you know to our communities and then that's how we widen the circle right well, let's take that on a macro level then mm-hmm. what, what do you feel is the role or the the purpose for humans on this planet why what do you oh. feel what what gift are we bringing that the planet can't have without humanity it's a great question i think in the question though i i, I want to like delineate something it's like i feel like there's a a misconception that happens when we say the planet and we say humans and we like separate separation because i don't think we're separate my belief right this is my perspective like i i there's something that happens when we think about nature as this thing that's out there and yeah. here we are and nature is this Especially other further thing. we separate it from yeah. buildings and brick yeah right but yes there's that too but bef- but even before we get to that it's like i i want to just say in the languaging i think it's important to recognize that we are nature nature is us we're actually not it's not that we're separate from nature i feel mm-hmm. like that that there in our languaging in the very way that we talk about nature mm-hmm. there's often this separation that just happens immediately just by saying like us and them mm-hmm. right there's like this duality that's created and what i like to re- help us remember in presence i'd like to presence now is that nature is working through us we are in fact nature and and there is an experience this self-realization the self-awakening this mirroring that's happening with nature seeing herself through this human experience mm-hmm. if, if that makes sense mm-hmm. and so i feel that like it, what's happening right now on the planet when we think about why are humans here what are, what is our mission what is our role here it's a great question i don't know that i have the answer to it other than i feel i feel what my experience is is that it's this awakening i'm here to wake up to myself and to recognize that I'm in fact no different than this lake here, this beautiful volcanoes, mm-hmm. you know, than you, right? And then even this technology, mm-hmm. that I'm not separate from this. This is all a relationship that's primordial that comes back to, this is fire. Mm-hmm. This technology right here, you feel the heat coming off of it, that electricity coming through there, that 110 volts or 240 or whatever right back to some generator somewhere that's generating that power Mm -hmm. by sun Mm -hmm. by coal by fire right by nuclear Mm -hmm. by some form of fire and it's evolved all of this stuff that fire and us as two-legged i think of all of the beings on the planet all of the sentient all of the animals right we were gifted fire we were gifted it we were Mm -hmm. gifted the power of how to have a relationship with fire and are we always in good relationship? No, obviously. And part of that is that our technology, fire, is out of control. Mm-hmm. It's burning like way faster than we know how to even manage it ourselves. And that's one of the big questions and one of the big kind of pieces to, I guess, the discourse you could say that I like to bring up and help one another remember is that we're fire keepers, first and foremost. And that's our responsibility. And literally all the other critters on this planet are like looking to humans like, like, yeah. would you guys please like take care of your job like you guys are not doing a good job of tending to the fire mm. literally and that's why everybody is like so many are dying and suffering or disappearing from this planet because we're not doing our part as nature mm-hmm. stewarding the fire mm-hmm. as fire keepers that's our job mm. that sacred motion of creating that fire that our ancestors have been doing since the beginning like we've forgotten that and we've almost taken it for granted again it's funny because it's turned into other forms and fire's taken all these forms of and our tech. Further, we feel it further separate than nature, even though it came from this planet. It is this mind from this planet. It is this planet. It is a planet. Even the plastic, right? The plastic. Is, it's, it's all, all of the components, right? All of the toxicity that we've generated is in fact still nature. And so it's like we're literally acting like this really interesting catalyst right now. To I think, and this is again, this is all my opinion, so you know, totally disagree with me. <laughs> Just like for what it's worth. Um, is, but my, my experience is that we're, we're in this to catalyze and bring all this stuff up right now. And I feel what we're being invited to do, now that we've made a big mess, because that's what we see, I feel and mm-hmm. I feel it and we've done a lot of trauma we've done a lot of damage because we've been ignorant and I think we've forgotten so I feel that what it's about right now is, is the human being the homo sapien the wise ape is being invited to remember mm. to remember that we are in fact the nature and that we are fully responsible for it and to reclaim our responsibility and that is the ability to respond and so we're being asked to take that responsibility right now and to reclaim. And now let's take, okay, the fire's out of control, but you know what? It's not too late. Mm-hmm. 
because it's a choice right now. I get to choose right now how I want to respond. And so I could respond by saying, I don't give a shit or it's too late or I'm or this isn't me or this isn't me. That's your problem. Yeah. I'm going to go right back into my virtual reality. Yeah. Or we can put it down and say, hey, how do I use these tools? Reclaim the power that I've been gifted with mm. this voice mm. and with this body that is made of all the elements in his nature and is natural. Mm. And how do I now take responsibility and work with my brother and build that community to reclaim our role and to stand and rise into the role as guardians of the earth and fire keepers uh -huh. and that's the prayer brother that's mm -hmm. and that's what i and all i know to do for me as an individual is to do that through my gifts that creator gave me this time around which is through music yeah. and building community through music and that's it you know and that's, dance that's such a powerful concept and it's such an important one and something that i've heard resonating between other elders that i've sat with even keith wilson here in san marcos the chocolate shaman asking him about the issues of the earth and he just kind of says you know it's it's a it's a lesson it's a gift that we can see what's happening in the planet because in the end uh, the 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 pollution and things in the ocean is because we're polluting ourselves it's happening right here so what really it's our awakening to see what's happening within ourselves so if we want to heal the planet we have to heal ourselves and then things will just naturally come come through and I feel very resonance with looking at everything like we're not separate from it everything's just these little reflections of our own self in some in some way and like you said even the toxicity it's from within us it's from the planet and these so and as well as the beauty all the things as we in, in in thank you and as i would just echo as we do the work mm -hmm. as we heal ourselves as we do the inner work which starts with have we you know as we address the relationship with our father as men mm -hmm. and our relationship to our mother as men and or as a woman right and or as someone who's non-gender you know specify however we orient ourselves but we got to do that work and as we do it within ourselves literally that ripples out mm -hmm. in ways that we can't even see or know yeah and some of the best medicine is music movement and community going back to well the there yeah thing. you know that's that i mean that's one of the fun ways i love to do it you know <laughs> what i mean because it's 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 beautiful to do that work in a way that's also joyous and playful mm -hmm. and celebratory Mm -hmm. And that's been my lens, but it's not everyone's. And I, you know, I mean, guys, you know, you, you do it through circus, you know, you do it through all these beautiful forms that you, what you guys have created here in the Momentum Collective that's so inspiring to just mm -hmm. be around for this week, you know, it's mm -hmm. been really amazing, brother. And you and Gabi are phenomenal human beings, and it's just like, I see that. We're each doing it in our way, and like, whoever's out there listening to this, whenever you listen to it, it's like, what is your art? What is your craft? What is your medicine that you only uniquely can bring to this circle? into the world right now mm. and i just invite you take that that is important and don't hold it don't keep it for yourself mm -hmm. the whole reason why we have a medicine bag with all those tools is to share them yeah. so that the medicine bag doesn't get heavy yeah yeah <laughs> you yeah. gotta share it you know and it's in that that we then as a whole as a circle we're gonna only do this together yeah and we heal this earth like that and it's the, the concept for me really turns into seeing everyone into the same community is seeing everyone is having those gifts that this person has a lesson to teach me the stranger on the bus that looks unhappy I'm not gonna be scared of him I'm gonna realize that he's got some medicine of some sort that maybe he'll share with me later on down the, down the road or maybe he'll be the doctor that saves my life later or the person that helps me out of the ditch or mm. sing me that song uh, on the street or w or just his presence just the presence of seeing him right yeah is is helping me to remember how can i show up more mm. like when i see someone totally checked out here what i think instead is like okay how am i being checked out how could i show up even more and be more present mm. so next time i'm like reaching for this because it's an awkward situation and i'm like oh, i just want to do this because god this is weird right how much do we do that yeah it's like how can i actually be like oh actually you know what let me let me let me breathe into my belly and let me even be more present than I would you know yeah and is that my invitation it's just an invitation to just keep showing up and I feel like if, if we all can do that in our own little ways that's really what does it that's really what is the tipping point and and it's what I feel is being called right now the earth she can't yell at us any louder yeah <laughs> let's hear that call yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and, thank you and respond thank you brother mm -hmm. yeah such a treat Tell us a little bit more about some mm. places where people can share the gift of community and music with you. You've got yeah. some retreats coming up. 
Yeah, we do. Um, so as I was mentioning, so you know the work we the work we do obviously in performances and in touring is, is occupies a lot of our bandwidth. You know, throughout the year, we're we're all around the planet um, with the work. One of the things that we love to do is 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 perform in, in large contexts, but one of my favorite things is facilitating and teaching. Um, and so one of the ways that we do that is through retreats. And we have a platform that we've been building. It's called Music is Medicine. Mm-hmm. And it's been a really incredible journey of, of being able to create exactly what we've been talking about within a small group and empowering individuals to open up their voice, to open up their expressiveness, to develop and cultivate their relationship to music and in music movement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so those two go hand in hand. Ashley, as you know, my wife, she's a, she's a dancer uh, first and foremost, and so she really helps to cultivate that dance moving component and weave that with me with the musicals. So in the music is medicine, we're, we're doing both of those things. Mm-hmm. Um, so right now we have a retreat coming up in Sedona in the beginning of April, our next Music is Medicine retreat. It's a five-day deep dive into this work mm-hmm. um, where people really get to connect with the land, be on the land, um, which is incredible land like here. Mm-hmm. It's one of those power vortexes of the planet. Mm-hmm. Energy centers for sure. Energy centers, exactly. You know, So it brings it all up and it gives us that extra kind of like catalyst, mm-hmm. if you will. Um, and then we're going to be, we've been, we just did our first one in L.A. and we're going to be doing more Music is Medicine events. Mm-hmm. So there's the retreat, music's medicine retreats, and then the events are especially curated events where it's not like just a standard concert, if you will, mm-hmm. where, you know, if I'm playing in a festival lineup or, you know, with other acts or where we might be playing in, you know, alcohol venues or whatever. The music is medicine container is a place where we cu- curate the whole container and basically bring the ceremony like we would sit, you know, in say an ayahuasca ceremony or what have you, you know, where we bring that intentionality and the prayer into that and the the reverence of that and the playfulness in that Mm -hmm. as well um into a very curated space where we basically we take people through movement sound we activate them kind of what we do in the retreats but like in this collective of like 800 people if you will it's like kind of with the one we just did in la was about 800 people Mm -hmm. and then we design the whole space we work with all the senses so we're doing projection mapping we're doing bringing incredible sounds you know basically to take people super deep and recognize that we don't need any substance. Mm. We don't need... Our plant teachers are already in us and woven into our fabric. You know, all of our unseen being, all of our spiritual guides, they're always with us. Yeah, we can awaken Aya and these other medicines already. And so it's, that's the whole concept of this music as medicine, is that we are the music. Mm-hmm. We music, are the medicine. And we are the medicine. <laughs> exactly. And so giving people those tools and awakening that mm-hmm. and really catalyzing that in a container of, a, of, a, of an experience for one evening. Mm-hmm. That's the idea. How do we make that and like bring all the right elements together and activate the whole space? And the one in LA was phenomenal. I mean, we, it was super lit. Shiva Ray came and, and did the opening kind of movement aspect with us and did some circle songs and then did this epic three and a half, four hour journey with people uh, into sacred sound. And like, so we did the full mm-hmm. spectrum of sound. So yeah, invite people to just stay in touch with us. Um, my website porangi.com p-o-r-a-n-g-u-i dot com and then uh, music is medicine dot me is the website and kind of url that we're going to continue to be building out so Excellent. yeah and any any other sets or music remixes coming up as well people yeah great question there is um so this year we've got probably in the spring uh, a couple really amazing collaboration on remixes um, there's going to be a remix album coming out on Resueño Records, which is Moe's. With Moe's, our yeah, good friend. Our He'll good friend be Moe's. with us in uh, Madeira's in Nicaragua for our yes. residency too in March. Yes. So. so Moe's um, and I have been collaborating on this. Kind of, It's been in the works, and so we're going to be putting out uh, a set of remixes that just with him. And then there's going to be a set on his label, Resueño, which is going to be with seven different producers that we've worked with. Kind of each one taking one of my songs from the last live album and then their interpretation of that which they're epic probably in the kind of slow deep medicine house vibes Mm -hmm. so it should be really juicy we're super stoked for that so that's going to come out probably around equinox um the the resueño release Mm -hmm. and then moses release a little after that so those two in the works and then this year for me is a recording year so i'm trying to tour a little less and make some room to then birth the whole new set of music that's been coming through awesome that silence for that Exactly. Music to come through. Exactly. Hopefully, you find some yes. of that time for yourself. No, it's it's your happening. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it has to. So, so yeah. So I hope people just keep connecting with us through all the the channels and yeah, and just such a treat to keep working with you guys. I really Got hope it. that we get to do more. You know, with momentum. Know. And 
and with you and Gabi, just really so inspired by you guys and incredible human beings. Thank you very much. Obrigado. Thank you very much for your time here today and yeah. being with us all week. It's been an amazing week and and yeah, just seeing the cross pollination within the momentum and also within the San Marcos community with with Joshua mm -hmm. with Embodiment Festival and Moe's and everyone here. So yeah. um, we are the community. We are the medicine. Let's keep oh. sharing it. Obrigado. Oh. <laughs> Porangi, you have been here. John Early with Momentum Collective on our podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in and, and sharing your light and your passion and your medicine as well. Mm. So enjoy the day, guys. Beleza. <laughs> for more info or content from Momentum Collective or to apply for one of our international artist residencies, visit MomentumCollective.com. That's Momentum, M-O-M-E-N-T-O-M. -M -E Momentum podcast theme you're listening to is the track Beam Me Up by our friend and producer Arterium. For more eclectic soundscapes, find Arterium on SoundCloud.